Hello, and welcome to another Alias 2021 Deep Dive session. In this session, we'll be talking about some new Dynamo sample files and some changes to file import and export. So here we have a kind of a canvas view of a, a SUV and a wheelbase. And we want to get started with some with a sub D. So we've added a new sub D sample file. And that sub D sample file can be found in this location. And I'll just paste it in here. And the sample file that I'd like to work with is the subdiv wheel arch. And I'm just going to import that. So that guy comes in and, and what do we have? I'm going to turn off the canvas just really quickly. What we've brought in is a sub D. The wheels were here, but we've brought in a sub D. And that sub D is controlled by these three curves. Okay. And when you open it, we'll have this, these um, uh, locators on it. I'll, I'll explain what each one does. But basically, what this allows you to do is create a body side of a car by simply modifying three curves. So if we look at this in box mode, and I'm just going to come over here to my left view. All right. And I might go to number three, which is smooth shading. And grab this vertex, and I'm just going to move it up a little bit. Now, the first time you move this, so that's going to control the width of the wheel arch, okay? The size of the wheel arch, if you will. So the first time you, I did that, you saw a kind of a little lag. It kind of waited a second. Well, what it has to do is go out and basically fire up Dynamo in the background. So Dynamo's running in the background right now, calculating all of the stuff to generate this sub D for us. So now that it's it's got all loaded, if I just come over here and I'm just going to grab, I'm going to turn these locators off and grab these curves. So there's really three curves. And now I can move that sub D away from the zero plane. And I'm just going to put that, that the side of this truck over here. All right. And I'm going to put it about maybe five millimeters outside of those wheels, just so it looks good. Um, and then I'm going to come back to my view over here and I'm going to see if I'm about in the center. It looks like I'm about in the center. Maybe I'll pull that up just a touch. Okay. And now I'm going to grab this vertex and I'm going to move this vertex and make it smaller. Okay. Now, I don't know that this uh, designer theoretically made this wheel arch perfectly round. It's entirely possible that he didn't. So I've made it the right width, I believe. And now I'm just going to pick, oops, I'm going to pick these curves and move them up, all right, until I find the top of that wheel arch, right? This is just to get me a quick wheel arch, okay? This isn't to make a final model. This is just to quickly get a body side thrown in, okay? Now I'm going to come over here to the rear, and I'm going to grab this rear vertex, and I'm going to slide that guy forward. And right there, it looks like I'm about on. Right there looks pretty good. Maybe a touch forward. I'm a perfectionist. OK. Now, currently, we have a certain number of segments around this wheel arch. And we start that with six. Six faces around a wheel arch, which is typically pretty good. But if you want to have a little more control around there, or if you know that you're going to need more for whatever you're going to be doing, you could pick this curve. And I'm just going to use the Alt-D hotkey. And I could just say, add one more. And now that adds one more. So now instead of six, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven faces. If I went up to three, we now have eight faces. And you can also see that's adding faces to the body side. All right. Now I'm just going to set that maybe to two and hit OK. If I change this number, so if I pick this curve right here, Alt D, and I up this one plus, this curve controls the number of faces out around the wheel arch. And I'm just going to set that back to two because I don't really care to change that one. And then we have a last one, which is pick this body side curve, and this controls how many segments are right here. So these number of segments, right, one and two is controlled by this curve, but in between here is controlled by this curve. So again, Alt D, if I make this four, 
now we've got four inside of here. All right, so it's just a quick way for us to get a body side, and then you can immediately just go in and delete your construction history and just start bending this into the shape that you want. And kind of quickly, you can see how with a body side really quick like that, and then if I drew a degree one curve or a curve outside of this um, side view, I could extrude that across in center line, do some bridging, and I'd have a pr pretty quick model here to start with. Another thing that we've done um, to really help users get access to these types of uh, sample files or files that they generally create and want to use quite often. Currently, when you take this file import icon and you drag it to your shelf, it remembers the location that it last accessed. So now I can automatically go back to that path wherever it was. In this case, it's C drive, programs, alias 2021, Dynamo sample files but that could be on a network drive that you're sharing amongst a group of users. So now we can all get access to the same script and just access it whenever we want right from our shelf. And of course we could go in here and um, use the uh, control key. Oops, we could use the control key and double click this and change this to W-H-L-A-R-C-H. I would change this to W-H-L-A-R-C-H and then say OK, and now this has changed to wheel arch. And as soon as I click on this, I can say import, and there we go. I'm right at that same location. And last but not least, we've added the ability, if you pick a sub-D and you go to File, Export, Active as Sub-D, we have a new option to export that as a T-spline file. And the T-spline file, is got a little benefit over the OBJ file in that it can transfer creases. When you've put creases on your sub-D, we can export them with the TSS, in the TSS format. And that can be accessed in tools like um, Fusion 360 or other tools that can access T-spline library files. So a little bit of flexibility there and a way to transfer your sub-D models that have creases to other packages for downstream use or manufacturing once you're done with your creative side and alias. So thanks for joining, and we'll see you next time.